To bring to the end of a year of fantastic interviews, we thought we'd present a special gift to you for the holiday season. We're welcoming staff from the School of Physics and Astronomy to bring us some of their favourite seasonal stories and songs. Happy holidays from the St Andrews Physics Society and enjoy listening. Dr Christopher Hooley is now going to sing a cappella Sammy Khan and Joe Stein's Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It doesn't show signs of stopping, and I've brought some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I'll hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. Oh, the fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbying. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Hello, I'm Andrew Cameron, and I'm going to read you Roald Dahl's retelling of the story of Little Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. As soon as Wolf began to feel that he would like a decent meal, he went and knocked on Grandma's door. When Grandma opened it, she saw the sharp white teeth, the horrid grin, and Wolfie said, May I come in? Poor Grandmama was terrified. He's going to eat me up, she cried. And she was absolutely right. He ate her up in one big bite. But Grandmama was small and tough, and Wolfie wailed, That's not enough. I haven't yet begun to feel that I have had a decent meal. He ran around the kitchen, yelping, I've got to have another helping. Then added with a frightful leer, I'm therefore going to wait right here till little Miss Red Riding Hood comes home from walking in the wood. He quickly put on Grandma's clothes. Of course, he hadn't eaten those. He dressed himself in coat and hat. He put on shoes and after that he even brushed and curled his hair then sat himself in Grandma's chair. In came the little girl in red. She stopped, she stared, and then she said, What great big ears you have, Grandma! All the better to hear you with, the wolf replied. What great big eyes you have, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to see you with, the wolf replied. He sat there watching her and smiled. He thought, I'm going to eat this child. Compared with her old grandmama, she's going to taste like caviar. Then Little Red Riding Hood said, But Grandma, what a lovely great big furry coat you have on. That's wrong, cried Wolf. Have you forgot to tell me what big teeth I've got? Ah well, no matter what you say. I'm going to eat you anyway. The small girl smiles. One eyelid flickers. She whips a pistol from her knickers. She aims it at the creature's head and bang, 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 she shoots him dead. A few weeks later in the wood, I came across Miss Riding Hood. But what a change! No cloak of red, no silly hood upon her head. She said, hello, and do please note, my lovely furry wolfskin coat. So this is Moira Jardin, and I'm going to read a poem written by Roald Dahl for the Great Ormond Street Hospital. It's called Mother Christmas. Where art thou, Mother Christmas? I only wish I knew why father should get all the praise and no one mentions you. I'll bet you buy the presents and wrap them, large and small, while all the time that rotten swine pretends he's done it all. So hail to Mother Christmas, who shoulders all the work, and down with Father Christmas, 
that unmitigated jerk. Hello! Bruce Sinclair here, reading Twas the Night Before Christmas by Clement Clark Moore. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in the hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mamma in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When, out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When, what to my wondering eyes should appear, but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner, on Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then a twinkling I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my hand and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur, from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked just like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, oh, how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night!